Hello, it's Sports The Money and I'm Bimbola Awiyali. On this sportcast, Kenya long distance runner banned until 2023. Victor Moses uh, moves to Sparta on loan. Juventus reports 89.7 million euro loss and four success lessons from the last style bender as club football returns this weekend. Uh, all of this and more right after this. Right, a Kenya runner Daniel Wanjiru has been banned from athletics until 2023 for doping. Wanjiru, who won the 2017 London Marathon, was provisionally suspended in April, but he denied taking a prohibited substance and requested a tribunal. The Athletics Integrity Unit has now confirmed the 28-year-old's ban in place until the 8th of December 2023. Details published by the AIU says when Jiru returned a posi- sample showing levels of red blood cells which had no physiological explanation. He was tested 16 times between April 27, 2017 and 2019 in his 14th test on the 9th of March 2019. He showed elevated levels of hemoglobin concentration. It was concluded that the change in levels between tests could not be explained by any other cause than blood manipulation. The panel said it was highly likely a banned substance or method had been used. Now, the mixed martial arts, uh, Conor McGregor says he has accepted a date to fight American Dustin Poirier in Texas next year. This comes after the former 32-year-old two-weight UFC champion announced his retirement in June, making it the third time he has announced his retirement in four years. But it seems uh, he's coming back again because he has been openly negotiating with UFC promoter Dana White about a return to the octagon and said in a tweet that the bout would be on the 23rd of January. McGregor says he wants the fight place uh, to to take place at the Dallas Cowboys' uh, AT&T Stadium because of his relationship with the owner of the stadium, Jerry Jones. McGregor's opponent, 31-year-old Poirier, responded in a tweet saying, Close to home for me on my birthday weekend? What wait? McGregor also suggested he would then fight 41-year-old boxer Manny Pacquiao in the Middle East. McGregor's last fight was a win over Donald Cerrone at uh, UFC 246 in January, and that gave him a 22-4 record in mixed martial arts. And out of football, former Super Eagles winger Victor Moses has left Chelsea to play at Spartak Moscow for the 2020-2021 season. The 29-year-old has barely featured at Stamford Bridge over the past few seasons, spending most of his time elsewhere on temporary temporary moves. And uh, he will continue the trend this season with a loan move to Spartak, where he will be until the end of the season. Now, the deal uh, he struck includes an option for the Russian club to purchase him outrightly. Spartak are already 10 games into their league season and sit second in the table, level on points with city rival Siska Moscow. Our sports authorities in Nigeria will meet next week in Lagos over a possible return of the 2020 National Sports Festival. Now, this was contained in a letter dated and signed by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, that's Mr. Gabriel Aduda. And uh, the letter was sent to all sports ministries and sports commissions. The meeting is uh, scheduled to hold between the 23rd and uh, the, between the 22nd and the 23rd of October in Ikeja, Lagos. The National Council on Sports comprises the Sports Minister, Sunday Dari, who is the chairman and all commissioners of sports or their equivalent from the 36 states of the federation as well 
as the secretary in charge of sports in the Federal Capital Territory. The National Sports Festival, which was earlier scheduled to hold between March 22nd and April the 1st, was postponed indefinitely due to COVID-19. And still in Nigeria, uh, it seems the ban on all spectator sporting activities will be lifted soon. Now, this follows a tweet by the Minister of Youth and Sport Development, Sunday Dari, during the week. In that tweet, Dari said, the sport ministry has done all that's necessary and required, especially with regard to the COVID-19 protocols. He said the Presidential Task Force on the Virus, the Health Ministry and the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, the NCDC, have uh, gu- you know, offered their um, appropriate guidance on the matter. He then called for patients from all sports lovers. The coronavirus outbreak halted sporting events in Nigeria since March, but in August, the federal government lifted restrictions on non-contact sports with the ban on contact sports still in place. Uh, Juventus, uh, the Italian side, uh, known also as the old ladies, have recorded losses of 89.7 million euros for the financial year to June the 30th. The club made the announcement uh, on Thursday during a virtual shareholders meeting in Turin, chaired by club president Andrea Agnelli. The nine-time reigning uh, Serie A champions reported a deficit which included the 39.9 million euro shortfall from the previous financial year. The Turin Giants also announced a new organizational structure with uh, Fred Federico uh, Cherubini taking over as new football director. The club in a statement said the new organizational structure <clears throat> envisages the concentration of the club's activities in two macro structures. That's one, the football area, and two, the business area. Uh, Cherubini will directly report to Fabio Para who maintains the direct responsibility of the first team. And still on football, clubs from the English Championship, League 1 and League 2, have turned down the Premier League's £50 million bailout and have told the EFL board they will decline any help which excludes any of its members. Now, this comes after the Premier League offered grants and interest-free uh, loans totaling around £50 million pounds to clubs in League 1 and League 2, but they made no funds available for clubs in the Championship. Now, CEO of uh, Championship Club uh, described the bailout offer as a simple attempt to create a divide between Championship Clubs and those in Leagues 1 and 2. He said there was a collective spirit amongst clubs not to get separated by a deal designed to divide and rule. Now, a statement from the EFL said the league has been very clear in its discussions on the financial requirements needed to address lost gate receipts in 2019-2020 and 2020-2021. And uh, while EFL clubs are appreciative that a formal proposal has now been put forward, the conditional offer of £50 million falls short of what they need. Now, despite EFL clubs rejecting the offer, it is understood that the financial package from the Premier League remains on the table for any EFL club that wishes or needs to utilise it. So uh, now we want to talk about something, um, four lessons that we can learn from the UFC champion Israel Adesanya. Four lessons about success. I mean, this is spot the money. This is where we talk about, um, you know, success, uh, sports, uh, you know, and, you know, everything that has to do with sports, especially when it comes to uh, development, improvement, and of course the financial side. So, uh, came across this interview, you know, that, uh, Israel Adesanya did, uh, uh, with some, uh, guys, and it was, you know, uh, 
spitting uh, truths and uh, revealing some personal things about himself. And I just want to share with you four lessons that you can take away, uh, you know, from that interview. Uh, I'll be playing portions of the interview, but you know, just to itemize those four things. Now he's known as the last style bender. His name is Israel Adesanya. Is the undefeated UFC middleweight champion. He's a Nigerian-born New Zealander. If you've seen any of his fights, you know, you know, he still has his Nigerian blood in him. Uh, even for the Ensars pro- um, protest, he posted a picture, you know, and you know, he still speaks his native uh, Yoruba dialect fluently. Um, he's regarded as one of the most dangerous fighters in the world with over 100 professional fighting victories and a 20 nil record in mixed martial arts. Woo! 20 nil has never been defeated. Now, he has battled his way up the ranks of uh, various promotions and now, through much of the UFC middleweight division, is now ranked as the third best pound-for-pound fighter in the world. So... Why am I reeling out his achievements? Because I want to lay the groundwork for this interview he had and what, you know, can be taken away from the conversation. So, um, number one, do not let your emotions take the wheel. Adesanya uh, says people get overly excited and don't know how to use that excitement. He says they get sad and don't know how to control that emotion. And people sometimes throw themselves off buildings because of that same thing, emotion. Um, It's the same with anger. You just have to know how to channel your anger, you know, to get a positive result. People make decisions in anger that they regret because they do not know how to hone their feelings. Now, in his title defense against the then undefeated Paulo Costa, things got personal. He admitted that things got personal because, you know, and fighters do this. Um, when they are locked head to head, sometimes they whisper things. They try to rile up their um, opponent, you know, so that, you know, and when you are angry, you can be disoriented. You forget, you know, some of the things that you've been taught and uh, the pattern that you came into the fight with, and then you might make mistakes. But what he's saying is that, you know, in such a case, Paulo Costa was trying to rile him up, but he used that anger in a positive way. So he says things get personal. Uh, It was the second time in UFC history that two undefeated fighters met for a title bout. That particular fight earned more than 700,000 pay-per-view buys, making it the third biggest UFC fight of the year. And with the stakes so high, so high, and the feud so bitter, it could have been easy to be emotional with some of the things that Paulo Costa said in his ear in the octagon. But Adesoya says he stayed grounded. Uh, you know, part of the things, you know, Paulo Costa, you know, was whispering to him that he said even before the fight, you know, he dissed him, he dissed uh, uh, Nigerians, you know, he, he said some stuff. But he admitted, you know, if you watch the interview, it's online. He admitted that, yeah, he got angry. But then he channeled it positively, and now Paulo Costa is part of that 22 nil statistic. Never, uh, still undefeated, uh, the 20 nil, I beg your pardon, nil uh, statistic. Number two, surround yourself with people you trust. Now, with fame and fortune comes people who are eager to take whatever they can from you, uh, from the inside of your circle and out the former being the most dangerous he says now being able to trust those around you is paramount says adesoya now uh, whether it's the sponsor on your trunks the man in your corner the coaches you train with or the accountant monitoring your books let's hear him say it better you know i look i have my parents who are who are supportive you know, they were apprehensive at first, but they could see my passion. They could see, you know, 
that oh he's he's got something. I think after my first King in the Ring win was when they were like, you know, he's actually really good at this. Um, but yeah, having my my father, he's an accountant, so he's a smart man, and you know I could pay someone else to do the job that he does, but he does it for free and out of love and. Because he wants his seed to be successful, so no one on this planet is gonna have my back like my father does and my creator does. So yeah, having him watch my back, and still to this day, he's that hawk, that super eagle, that's just circling and just quietly watching and just seeing, you know, where the vultures at. You know, the vultures think they don't want circling me, but nah, you got a super eagle circling them, all of them. So yeah, I believe him and also the team I have around me as well. You know, there, there was times when guys like Engage, my sponsor, you know, I, I was on my my last hundred bucks, and he just tells me check my account, and I've got money in my account that can last me for the next five months. And also, just I, I wasn't always financially literate, if you will. I wasn't really good with saving money, but now I've learned. I've been rich, broke, rich, broke again, and I'm rich again. So. With the with the lessons I've learned along the way, I make sure I'm never going back. So I still stay broke and I stay woke. Well, he still stays broke and he stays woke at the same time. Can you do both at the same time? Yes, says Adesanya. Now he also says detach from the outcome. Adesanya, or easy as is known to those close to him, says he forgets what uh, he forgets that he's a champion all the time. Uh, he says, I don't have the belt with me, my belt somewhere else at the gym or somewhere at my coach's house. I never really attached myself to that. It's nice, but I've gotten many belts in my life. Let's listen to uh, what Adesanya had to say about, uh, you know, being detached from the outcome. That's the difference I learned from therapy. You don't take things personally. It's personal. But I was just like, right, that'll keep... And the fight week, all I kept on saying was practicing patience. So, How you excited for the fight as well? Are you, are you excited? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just practicing patience. And I knew you can't, you can't, you know, you don't want to bust too quick. So you just have to wait till the right time before you mm, right on them. One thing I like to do before, when, when I watch my fights back, you look into my eyes when I'm, when I'm fighting or right when I'm in the cage, you just look into my eyes when I'm in that octagon and you'll see like, but there's a spectrum, but everyone has different sides to them. You know, everyone I speak two, three different languages. I speak in different accents. I'm able to code switch. Same thing with character. That, that's one thing I learned from dancing is owning different characters, you know, and it's not acting. My last two opponents are actors. They were all acting like they wanted it, but I could feel them. They, they don't want it. But how I switch is um, just surrender. Just surrender to surrender. Let go. Don't be so focused on the outcome. That's the difference I learned. So don't be uh, too focused on the outcome. And uh, finally, he says, have the courage to help when you need it. I'll let him tell you more about that. I've never said this to anyone before, but like it was, it was once in 2013. So I said, like, I quit my job in 2013, right? September 4th. Before that, I was going through the biggest depression of my life. Nothing was working in life. My job sucked. Hated it, you know girl was about to leave me you know me and my dog weren't really like bonded because he could see i wasn't like stable and i knew this person who like she she had already been like committed to like a ward or something and i remember like i, I asked her to give me the number because i didn't want to be in control anymore i wanted some someone else to just take the keys and just like i didn't want to go to work i didn't want to do anything i just wanted someone else to just take control and me just be in the hospital bed and she gave me the number of people to call to like commit myself. And I remember I had the number there and I was just like, and this is me at my lowest point. And I was like, nah. And I put it down. And I remember I just, I just couldn't do that because I knew like for me as Izzy, that wasn't what I needed. That wasn't what I needed. And I just needed to push through. I know when to ask for help, you know, but after that, that was probably like a moment that I realized, all right, cool. I need to ask for help, but not this help. So I talked to my parents, I talked to my friends, and then I started to see someone from there, like a little bit, because I had that with the work that I had at the time. You had like, I think, five free visits with a therapist or whatever, with the job that I had at the time. So I started using that. And yeah, first step is just like, just accept that you're not perfect. Accept that you're flawed and realize that I need help. 
and just be honest with yourself. So, yeah. All right. Uh, so becoming a champion, uh, you know, be- begins with you. That's the summary of uh, all that uh, we've been talking about. So those are four uh, things that, you know, that you can take away from uh, the success story of uh, Israel Adesanya, the last tile bender, uh, the UFC champion. Uh, so that's uh, bringing us closer to the end of uh, today's uh, edition of uh, Spot the Money. But for the punters, uh, some key matches to watch out for this weekend in Europe. Uh, the Merseyside Derby, Everton at home to Liverpool, Manchester City also at home to Arsenal. The master Pep Guardiola hosts the pupil uh, Mikel Arteta for the second time in the league this year. Pep won 3 nil early this year in the league uh, game. Mateta defeated him, however, in uh, the FA Cup 2 nil. I guess this will be the tiebreaker. Now then, there's the Milan derby in the Serie A. Inter host AC Milan. Uh, it promises to be a cracking weekend. And all of these matches I've mentioned are just on Saturday. Uh, so uh, it, it really promises to be an exciting uh, one. Uh, well, that's our show. Uh, Spot the money. Uh, come to an end once again. The weekend edition. The conversation can continue on Twitter at uh, Africa Biz Radio and online at www.africabizradiobusinessradio.com. Until our next episode, I'm Bimbalao Yali. Keep winning.